So ladies and gentlemen, there's a very strange universe of deep thinkers that are, I say deep thinkers, I say they're, they're tackling big, broad subjects. Um, Endeavor is our current subject, <clears throat> and he has a video called Ideology Isn't Everything, and um, he's tackling big subjects, and he does not have a background philosophy. He doesn't have a basic philosophy. And so he's, he's just floating. He doesn't know. Sometimes he has a principle. Sometimes he, he has a symbol. He doesn't know. He, for one thing, democracy confuses him, right? Because he thinks it's good, right? Because we've all been raised. Democracy is good. He hasn't even heard constitutional republic is the good thing and democracy is bad. He's not even familiar with that much. So, he's thinking about big, huge, broad subjects. And he has very, very small, small education. So it's a very unfortunate situation. So, let's look at what he says about ideologies and everything. And there are going to be some long periods where I'm just going to listen to it. Excuse me, and um, I think that's just the best way to do it. There's been something on my mind lately which has made me rethink a lot of my own diagnoses of the problems facing the West and the modern world, and a lot of the discourse that goes on in circles that I'm both part of and the rest of society as a whole. I addressed this in a recent live stream, which you might have missed because I had to private it for a few days, but you can find it on my channel now. And this is the question over ideology. How much does the ideological foundation of a society matter? What is my ideology? Well, the label I identify with the most is reality. <clears throat> How much does the ideological foundation of a society matter? Well, if we can say, and I don't want to argue too much about this, but let's just say we could. If we could say that the United States of America and the French Revolution and the Soviet Russian Revolution were three different versions, then those would give you an idea of how much it matters. Okay? So, uh, I don't know what his view of those three would be. He would probably have some other explanation of how those three came about, but it's their ideology that brought them what it brought them. And if I had to define that, I'd say it involves a belief in the positive characteristics of order and hierarchy, as opposed to the disorder brought about by libertine or egalitarian. All right, all right. So we're going to just start off. We're just going to start off with a false dichotomy of order and disorder. Now, where does he get that? Where does he get the idea that order and disorder are fundamental that he can use? To just uh, to just look at everything, the whole universe. He didn't even give a justification for order and disorder as his measurement. Now, the reason that he says disorder is because he views uh, transvestites running around and this as disorderly, and he wants to go back to more orderly times. He thinks it's disorderly to have kids listening to punk rock music and Miley Cyrus half naked on stage and and uh, he's he doesn't want disorder he wants orderliness so uh, he's tackling big subjects here but he's I, I hope he's young uh. social structures and I would say this also involves a recognition of a civilizational decay and what progressives define as progress now, I'm fully aware that this description is vague. What policies does it suggest? Does it mean I support a free market economy? Or oh, yeah, he's upset about progress. And I, I we watched this. This is a, a dish. This is what, what's the other one that he did? This is another. This is a separate. Oh, the Enlightenment. We watched the one on the Enlightenment. And he's upset about progress because he, re, he sees it as an unbroken solid line all the way from the Enlightenment right up to trannies going into girls' bathrooms and and moving forward from here. And he sees the crazy, insane, tribal, leftist, uh, 
tribal leftist racism that is destroying America, destroyed our college system, he sees that insanity as an unbroken continuation of the Enlightenment. Because the Enlightenment uh, let women have the vote, therefore, whatever the next step is must also be the Enlightenment's fault. Right? Wouldn't it be possible that the Enlightenment freed us and then once we got freed, anybody who wanted to change the situation would say, I'm going to free you more, but they wouldn't be freeing you more. They would be putting you in chains. So wouldn't it be the case then that this is not stepping forward, but moving back from the Enlightenment? Yes, that is the case. The tribalism, the racism, the hate speech, the hate laws, that is taking a step back from the Enlightenment, saying, uh, we're not just going to let everyone be and do as we please. We're going to start picking on each other. We're going to start making it illegal to hate each other. We're going to start making sure everybody loves each other. You know, the way they did in the 1500s. So, he is just confused about what and how uh, the, the Enlightenment is crumbling. What is crumbling is the Enlightenment. How is it crumbling? Racism and tribalism are being brought back. And he is worried about racism and tribalism. They scare him and he thinks they're garbage. And so he's attacking the Enlightenment. <laughs> oh, that's where we are with this guy right now. Do I support more government power or less? Now, I certainly have an opinion... Does he support more government power or less? Well, it depends. What's the government enforcing? So he, inf he will support government power if it enforces what he wants to enforce. He doesn't have a principle that government power should be utterly minimized to the nth degree. He doesn't have the principle that government power should be eradicated like the anarchists and communists. He doesn't have the principle that the government power should be maximized like a, a authoritarian or statist or monarch. He is a pragmatist about government power. He will use government power if and when it thinks he thinks it will benefit his view of what society should be. What should society be? It should be orderly. Orderliness. Orderliness is your principle. On these matters, I'm generally in favor of the free market, but I have plenty of criticisms of the modern capitalist system. Well, I generally like the free market. Some things I don't like about it. Well, you're a real clear thinker. Necessarily want the government running people's lives, but I do think the use of power to defend against subversion is legitimate. So he doesn't want the government to run people's lives, but also we can't allow society to be subverted. Now, let me give you a little bit of a lesson on freedom. It goes like this. Freedom is a goddamn mess. Now, just when you think you've set up a comfortable little society and you've got your little society and you're doing your little thing, along comes somebody and they set up a pornographer's shop. Now what are you going to do? Or they set up a strip club. Or they start to sell drugs. Or they start to sell um, uh, communist magazines and spread communism and spread socialist propaganda. Or they start spreading anarchy. Right? What are you going to do with your comfortable little uh, society that you had there? He'll use force. You know, freedom is the thing. It's a mess. Freedom's a mess. You... I think you're going to preserve order and use force when appropriate to preserve order and be pragmatic about it and have a better world than this world we have today with trannies running around and Miley Cyrus half naked on stage and and whatever else you're complaining about. The music and the the youth don't respect their authority, the authority of their elders and who knows what he's mad about. But he, he thinks it's disorderly and he wants order around this place, goddammit. Take a position on each issue as I see fit. But what He'll take a position on each issue as he sees fit. Is that pragmatism? That's not a philosophical position, you moron. As my position on almost every issue is the vision I have for a more conservative society. One where there is purpose. He says, he says, ideology isn't everything. That's the title of his thing here. And he's going on saying, uh, uh, I don't need an ideology. I can decide as I go. 
That's pragmatism. You have the ideology of William James. That's not very original of you. Culture, order, belonging, and the ability to reach self-actualization. This really is what my fight is for. I'd say this is the unifying factor that underlies the right, the vision of the world that those on the right seem to be striving for. But there is many different labels and ideologies that people with this vision subscribe to. The most descriptive label I would subscribe to myself is nationalist, which prescribes several policies when it comes to things like citizenship, immigration, sovereignty of a... So he's just got a basket of things he wants to, to get that he likes. See, he just he likes certain things about our world today, and he doesn't like the disintegration that's being foisted on us by the left. And the left, which is anti-reason, anti-individual, pro-tribe, pro-race, is trying to destroy the Enlightenment, and he's upset about the disintegration he sees, and he's going to arrest that disintegration by uh, installing an authority and deciding as and when he sees fit what he will... Uh, uh, this, is his, this is his answer to the fact that ideologies can be dangerous. He sees that ideologies are dangerous. He knows ideologies are dangerous. They destroy societies. They build terrible things. He knows this. His answer is, let's dispense with ideology. Oh, you're just going to be you're just going to be at the mercy of the first person to come along with an ideology. If once you have no ideology at all, you will be floating in a vacuum with no ideology, and you will just be at the mercy of the very first person to come along. Every age has an ideology, okay? So whether it's good or bad, and most of them are bad, every age has an ideology. It's not your question. It's not your ability. You don't, you, have, you don't have the ability to question whether or not we should have an ideology. Ideology isn't everything. I'm afraid it is. I'm afraid ideology is everything. If, if it comes from the root word for idea, then ideas are everything to human beings. Absolutely everything. ...and so on. But the reason I've adopted this position is because I tend to think it'll work towards the vision of a more conservative society. I'd say... So his total goal, after all that rationalization and wanting order over disorder, and, and what else did he go through, is he wants a more conservative society. I told you, he doesn't want these trannies in the bathrooms. Those on the left have a vision of a more egalitarian world, where they can do away with the perceived injustices of society, and people can live in harmony with a sense of liberation and equality. And the policies that those on the left support seem to push society in that direction. I'd say this is the fundamental divide between left and right. Now, I want to make it clear that I... How did, where did he say that the policies of the left are pushing society? Where? Let me hear that again position is because I tend to think it'll work towards the vision of a more conservative society. I'd say those on the left have a vision of a more egalitarian world. Now, I don't know what he means by the word egalitarian, but it's really, really badly screwed up. Egalitarian is hideous. The idea of egalitarianism is hideous. Equality before the law is the enlightenment idea, that everyone's equal before the law. Right, And that's where kings disappeared, and then, then we have a president who came from the citizenry. Very different. To have a citizen from the citizenry elected as the president, and then he goes back to the citizenry. Versus a king for life. Right, Very, very different view of individuals. All individuals are equal before the law. Now, now that you're equal, go on about and do as you please. Now, somebody who's really stupid looks at somebody with a car and someone else with a house and they have different things. That guy has a small car and no house, and that guy has a huge house and nine cars. Therefore, they're not equal. You see how stupid that idea is? You're equal before the law like a king is equal, is, like a king is not equal. The president is equal to the citizens like a king is not equal. And so we do away with that kingship thing. But the money is not the question. The money is a stupid... Uh, ab as it's a distraction that Marx just couldn't see past. He's just He was a Jew, so he couldn't see past money, if you want to make a crude joke. 
Uh, or maybe a joke that has a little more truth in it than we might like to say. <laughs> I had a friend who was a waitress that used to take her tips home and line them up on her bed, and each tip that she got from each patron of the night she would keep separate. Those dollar bills had to stay separate and had to sit on her bed in a separate pile, and she would look at all of the piles of money, and then she could put them together, and then who knows what. All right, so it's a little bit of truth in there somewhere. All right. They can do away with the perceived injustices of society, and people can live in harmony with a sense of liberation and equality. And the policies that those on the left support seem to push society in that direction. I'd say this is the fundamental divide between left and right. Liberation and equality. And a more Just conservative go through society. Once more here. I'd say those on the left have a vision of a more egalitarian world where they can do away with the perceived injustices of society and people can live in harmony with a sense of liberation and equality. All right, now that is all just an equivocation on what I've just said. That they are just confused about what equality is and they are just, you know, you can either accept freedom creates inequality and just live with it and realize there are going to be millionaires and there are going to be bums on the street and just live with that. Or you can try to, to, to cure that and destroy society because it's there's nothing actually to be cured. What you're actually seeing there is the individual choices those people have made reflected in the, the in in the results of their life over time. There's no disease or problem in society. Those people are there doing as they please. And for you to say that because some of them don't have as much money as others is stupid. It's just stupid to say they're not equal because one of them has less money than the other is just stupid. You've got to be a Marxist to do it. That is the egalitarianism. That Those people are attacking the Enlightenment. They are anti-Enlightenment. They are anti-reason. They are anti-freedom. They are anti-individualism. And he is confused about who is on which side. He has no idea about who's on what side or who to attack or who to team up with. He has no idea who to attack or team up with. And the policies that those on the left support seem to push society in that direction. I'd say this is the fundamental divide between left and right. No, they do not push us to a more equal society. Look at what's happening today. They're pushing us towards a place where we're going to kill white people or lock them up or, uh, or uh, enslave them or take their money uh, and make them pay for things their great-great-grandparents did. Okay? It is not moving us towards equality. Okay? Egalitarianism and the left is disintegrating the in, the individualism of the Renaissance. It is not moving us towards equality or egalitarianism or freedom. It is just destroying. Okay? It is simply nihilism. He thinks, he thinks that society is moving in a certain direction and he does not like the direction it's moving in and he doesn't realize that it's disintegration. He thinks that we're going to keep on going this way with transvestites in our little girls' bathrooms while we have iPhones. You know, and it's actually an either-or proposition. Either we're going to have a civilized society, or it's all going to fall apart and we're going to go into a dark age. But we can't, we can't go on like this. So he just doesn't understand what is going on in the dynamics in the society around us. It is disintegrating. And one of the pieces of evidence that it is disintegrating is the tribalism and the anti-individualism that he's upset about that he thinks, for some reason, for some bizarre reason, just because the left advocates it? So the left is fooling him. The left has fooled him into believing that they are still at the helm of progressivism and forward thinking and pro-freedom. And so he actually believes the right is probably Nazi fascist. So he probably thinks he should be a Nazi fascist. Now, I want to make it clear that ideology does matter when it comes to achieving these goals. Absolute monarchy would obviously push society in a rightward direction, while anarcho-communism would push it in a leftward one. Monarchy wouldn't necessarily push it in a rightward direction if it were a crazy, insane, leftist-leaning, pushing monarchy. So you're wrong. You're simply wrong. Monarchy is not, in some way, what does he think then? That it's probably, oh, monarchy it promotes order. That's right. There's order and there's disorder. That's right. That goes without saying. But I think there's a problem in seeing ideology as the sole driving force behind this phenomenon. 
For the purposes of those on the dissident right who see something deeply wrong with the West as it exists today and the direction it's headed in, we often try to pinpoint what exactly is the cause for the decline. This is a question that's been on my mind for several years now and something I still haven't fully been able to understand. It is the fact that we used to love reason and individualism and freedom and now we don't. Reason's out, individualism's out, tribalism and racism are back in, freedom is out, antitrust is all the rage, gotta do the antitrust thing, break down freedom. Uh, we had freedom right up till 1896 when we had antitrust come in. It's because freedom is disappearing. It's because individualism is disappearing. It's because people don't respect reason and rationality, which is why we have garbage like string theory in physics. If people could reason, then string theory would not be in physics. So he is upset about the disintegration of the Enlightenment, and he thinks thinks that it is the Enlightenment attacking his orderly society. He believes he has an orderly society that's being attacked by the Enlightenment. Wow! In reactionary circles, people often identify the French Revolution as the starting point of the West descent to where it is today. And for a while, I subscribed to this belief, that the ideas of the Enlightenment are behind the decline. That liberal... I what? The ideas of the Enlightenment were not behind the French Revolution, or only their worst ideas. Uh, the, the ideas of Rousseau... I guess I should have been talking about Locke. We are an hour into videos on this guy, and I should have been talking about Locke the whole time. We're 20 minutes on this video, I've never mentioned Locke. Well, that's unfortunate. Well, <coughs> the American Revolution was based on John Locke. The French Revolution was based on Jean-Jacques Rousseau. And Jean-Jacques Rousseau is a fool, don't you know? And that is why they chopped a bunch of people's heads off, because they were following Jean-Jacques Rousseau. And John Locke is the man on the block, sir. All right, shall we go? has been justified by the assumptions about the world the Enlightenment has given the West, setting in motion the wake progress of history, which I, as a reactionary, consider to be civilizational decay. Now, I have not made a 180 on this by any... So he probably, he's probably on, on line with the thinking that women shouldn't vote because they destroy civilizations when they vote. He's probably in that camp then, huh? means. In fact, I was actually going to follow up my video on Frankenstein with the first of several videos critiquing the Enlightenment. Those will still be made, but it might be best that I made this video first. I think the mistake I made was that I assigned too much blame to the ideology of liberalism for the decline of the West. Now, to be clear, I still consider classical liberalism to be an outdated system designed for a different era and to be based on falsehoods about humanity. I'm... So... Uh, <laughs> The world, uh, the world that he lives in and the world that was built by reason and logic, he thinks was built by uh, the insane signs of decay around us, right? All of the signs of decay that are in rather advanced stages, like modern art that's over a hundred years old, which he is not harping on. He probably thinks that Picasso is brilliant, right? Uh, the signs of decay that are rather old indeed, more than a century old, uh, he takes those as just the continuation of the Enlightenment project. And he wants to put this bullshit that's going on with the Enlightenment. He said the Enlightenment is getting out of control. That it did okay for a while in the 1800s, but now it's out of control. I'm confident that liberalism cannot lead the West forward. While I stand by my criticisms of liberalism, I previously thought it was a particularly bad ideology, which was the driving force behind the West's decline. But I don't think that that's really the case. Because while the ideological underpinnings of a society have an effect on the direction the society goes, any ideology, no matter what the creators originally prescribed, can be corrupted, decay, and become destructive. Because man is okay. an imperfect creature, and there's no ideology that can save him from himself. All right. Well, you shouldn't run your society on an ideology. You should have laws, and those should be hard to change. 
and ideologies shouldn't come along that destroy your laws. Now, there aren't a lot of societies that have discovered this. The United States of America is really alone on this principle so far. But other people are trying, and Britain has... Uh, we got our idea of it from Britain. They had the Magna Carta. <clears throat> they aren't doing as well as we are. We are the student that surpassed the master, but... Uh, you shouldn't be looking for a way to get an ideology to run your society on. You should get your ideology straight and then write your laws. <laughs> and then you'll just, you can go ahead after that. But uh, to have an ideology to run your society on is what you're looking at here. And then you're saying ideology is in everything. That's a, it's a strange, he's a strange thinker. You know, I think that the crisis that the West is facing today is, at its root, a spiritual one that Western man has become weak, that he's lost the drive that made him what he once was. It's a spiritual and problem. He's a Christian, and he wants us to start going back to church. And, you know, he probably is a quasi-atheist of some kind, a uh, non-believer or just an unbeliever, and he'll go ahead and take his kids back to church, believing that that's what's good for society, but his kids will grow up in that church not realizing that this is all just nonsense, they'll actually believe it, and they'll raise their kids in it really believing it, and then you're off to the races and you got a damn dark age like they've got in the Middle East right now. Is that what you want? I think this might have less to do with the political structures of the West today than I originally thought, and more to do with modernity. I'd say that when people become too accustomed to wealth and comfort, they become weak. They lose the fortitude that got them to where they are, and... All right, now if wealth and comfort lead to weakness, which, you know, there's a pretty good argument for it, but then Rome should have fallen apart around 100 B.C., and then it should have fallen apart again around 100 A.D., and again around 300 A.D. You know, why did it last so long if wealth leads to, dis to disintegration? If, if wealth and comfort lead to disintegration, the United States was so wealthy and so powerful by the year 1900, we should have disintegrated. And we were so enormously wealthy and powerful by 1925, again, we should have disintegrated. And again by 1950. And we're so wealthy and powerful today, we should disintegrate. We're the only hyperpower, and there's no end in sight. We keep on going and going and going. So, and this liberalism and these trannies in our bathroom, you know, we'll, we'll take care of that. You know, we don't have to throw out the Enlightenment and reform society. Uh, to take care of that. That's just the that's just the damn Democrats. We'll take care of them. They're taking care of themselves. You know, they're committing suicide in mass numbers in public. They are making fools of themselves. They're making idiots and morons of themselves in public daily. They the the the, the presidential debates are a joke. They didn't have a single American flag on the stage. Pathetic, worthless, treasonous bastards. So we are going to fix that. They're fixing, they're fixing it themselves. That's being fixed. This guy's got his panties in a bunch because the left is damaging society. And he's going to throw everything out and go back to monarchical dictatorship of some kind because he's upset about the damage the left is doing to society. The whole fabric of society begins to fall apart from there. And I believe that this can happen under any ideology, any political structure, or any religion. Yeah. The mistake I made was I focused too much on the historical period in the West from the He says he believes it can happen under any ideology. So uh, the, the, the problem is just endemic to the situation then. So he, he doesn't think that you can take an ideology, write laws with it, and then live in that society. He doesn't think that's possible. He thinks there's a constant churning of societies, a constant regeneration and rebuilding and re reconstituting of societies. And uh, in this regeneration and rebuilding and reconstituting, we have to <laughs> return to previous systems that worked better and do away with bad systems that were going in the wrong direction because we had trannies showing up in our little girls' bathrooms revolution to the modern day. From there I drew a line and said, this is our civilizational decay. I failed to realize that this phenomenon has occurred in other civilizations, ones that had very different ideological foundations to the post-Enlightenment West. I discussed this in the live stream I had with On the Offensive on the essay Fate of Empires. Civilizational decline has taken place on many occasions historically. 
The most obvious example being the Roman Empire, where the various social structures of a once great empire fell apart over time, much like what's happening to the West today. Empires begin to decline when the people become weak, and I tend to think the ideal... No, empires decline when people adopt bad ideologies, not when they become weak. To justify the decline comes after. A contradiction I found in my... The ideology to justify the decline comes after. Now, I'll give him one point, because the following does happen. People get wealthy, they sit around, they start reading and writing stuff, and in a wealthy society, you'll have many different thinkers. And so it's just God help that society that the best and the smartest are able to get up front. And in most societies, they can't because there's some sort of restrictions on free speech. So, if you're like in the Greek, in ancient Greece, where they all got together and talked, and the person who was able to make the best uh, plan by talking to everybody in the group was elected, and his, his plan went into effect. Well, that was like free speech writ large they had the idea that everybody should be able to speak their mind and the best man may win. Now, most societies aren't like that. As long as we can preserve that, that is a very, very important hedge against destruction because once you say people can't talk about stuff anymore, then you get to cement in whatever, whoever's view gets, whoever has the power to cement their views in. Now, this guy, I suspect, would probably be very, very happy if he, if you gave him a pen and said, write down what you want speech-wise, and we'll stop everything except for that type of speech, I'll bet he would be very happy with laws on speech. Uh, because it would be orderly. It would cause order, right? I'll bet. I don't know, but I'll bet. ...worldview is that while I'm a major critic of liberalism, democracy, and the Enlightenment, I have a deep admiration for the Victorian era in particular Canada in the late 19th century under the reign of Queen Victoria. Oh, well, my is he Canadian? He must be Canadian. That's probably why. That's probably why. Oh, well, you know, if you're a jingoist about your country, then you're going to have a hard time finding the greatest nation in the world, which is the United States of America. It's just south of your border. Oh, yeah, yeah. Is with the rich culture, their achievements, and their overall civilizational confidence. It is true that Victorian Britain and the British Empire as an extension was a politically liberal society for its time. It was a democracy, albeit a limited one. It had a liberal constitution, see, and it was a society that... It was a democracy. All, oh, now, see, he doesn't, he doesn't know about democracy being a bad no-no. He doesn't know that, does he? ...implemented the Enlightenment values that I'm so critical of. Yet they created the greatest empire in history. What Enlightenment values are you critical of? There are, there's reason and individualism. That's the Enlightenment. What are you critical of about those? Now, even though Victorian Britain and as an extension Canada was politically liberal, socially it was a very conservative society. There was a strict hierarchical social order. And this is what created the culture that I find so fascinating. The same could be said about the United States in the 19th century. It was a politically liberal nation for its time. While not being quite as hierarchical as Britain, it had a strong, healthy social order. American men of the 19th century are some of the greatest the West has ever seen. Yet today, under the exact same constitution, they've become weak. Mm -hmm. And though I do rec He must be... He, he, just, he just said that all American men today are weak under the same constitution. Well, he hasn't met Mr. Cropper. <laughs> what a jerk. As the symptoms of the decline existed, I'd argue that nations like Canada, America, Britain remained healthy, stable, and confident societies well into the 20th century. Though I have many problems with the foundational beliefs of liberalism, it wasn't until the latter half of the 20th century, after the West had undergone the trauma of two world wars, and had become so accustomed to material decadence that liberalism truly became the destructive force that it is today. And I feel that's because it's a system that, while flawed, was designed to function in a moral society. All right, so he equate he, so over time we have become more wealthy, and over time the leftist ideology, the attack on individualism, the attack on freedom, the attack on the Enlightenment has has uh, progressed and gotten worse, and so he is a, he he thinks that they're linked. They happen together. 
they 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 occur. What's the word of things happening together? And so he th he's conflating them, isn't he? He thinks that they are tied up together, that the march of forward of this leftist nonsense against freedom and individualism, he thinks is part and parcel with having wealth. If you have wealth, then, you, then your society will decay. Now, again, if that were true, then our society would have decayed many times over. Now, maybe it's decaying slowly. How long is it going to take? Four, six, eight hundred years? No, societies don't fall apart for that reason. They fall apart for embracing bad di ideologies. No. the West. All right, I'm at seven minutes, 27 seconds. I think I'll continue this on another video because I'm getting it 35 minutes and my computer doesn't like it when my video gets long. Thank you for watching, ladies and gentlemen. If you're enjoying this, I, uh, there's some of you out there who are making it all the way to the end of these, and uh, if you are, you should probably go to Patreon and give me five bucks a month.